and welcome to Behind the Seams, a monthly video series where our staff shares sewing tips, easy how-tos, and more. I'm your host, Lindsay Mayland. We have a great show ahead of us today covering a wide variety of topics, so we hope you enjoy it. We'll start with On Our Workspace, where one of our staff members shares something they're working on. And this month, I get to share. So I'm currently working on the Blast from the Past Mystery Sampler Quilt, which American Patchwork and Quilting is hosting to celebrate as a countdown to its 30th anniversary. So it just started at the beginning of April, so there are three blocks out of the total of 30 released so far. So these are the first three blocks. And I'm using my stash of Ruby Star fabric to make this quilt. So it has been so fun to pick out fabrics for each block and just play around with the different colors and prints and designs. So I can't wait to continue sewing this quilt. Um, and I hope you can join us. It's such a fun way to just do a little bit of sewing with different blocks, experiment with different designs and techniques every month. So you can find all the details at allpeoplequilt.com slash BOM2022 to join in the fun. Um, I would just love for everyone to join so we can see all the pretty things you sew along with us. Now we're going to hear from Beth who's going to share how to sew an easy napkin. Simple swaps can make a big difference in the impact we have on the planet. We encourage you to stitch up sustainable alternatives to disposable items and reduce waste around your home. I've got a variety of really cute Riley Blake Designs fabrics here for my napkins. This is a great project to use those larger scale motifs and fun novelty prints because you're going to see a lot of the pattern on your finished project. And you can stitch them up to match your decor or even get festive with some holiday prints and then switch those out as the seasons change. Now I do personally find that the darker background prints do work a little better for napkins and are going to hold up a little better to repeated washings than something with a lighter background. I haven't found staining to be much of an issue, but just something to keep in mind when you're selecting your fabrics. Since you'll want to make multiple napkins, I'll share my time-saving tips with you today. I made about 10 napkins per person in our family, and that has seemed to work well. You'll find the link to the free download in the video description. So the first thing we're doing is cutting all of our fabrics to an 18 inch square. A fat quarter is 18 by 21 inches, so you'll be able to get one napkin per fat quarter. Sometimes I do find that those fat quarters are just not quite 18 inches wide, and that's okay. Just cut as large a square as possible as you can out of the fabric that you have. So I notice sometimes mine are 17 and a half inches, 17 and three quarters inches square. I don't get too picky about it. Um, just as long as it's square, it'll work. Once your squares are cut, you're going to be marking on the wrong side of your fabric. So I've got this flipped over and we're measuring in an inch from each edge and marking a dot with a air or water soluble pen. And I made myself a little template out of a manila folder. So I just drew my one inch square on the corner, cut it out, and then I can line up the template with the edges and then just mark in the corners. This just makes it go a little bit faster when you're making a whole bunch of these. Once you've marked all the corners, then you'll fold the corner point into the dot and press. And then do that on all the corners. Next, we're going to trim a quarter inch away from that crease. So we're just cutting off just the tip of the triangle. And then do that on all the corners. Next, I'm going to fold in all the edges a quarter inch and then press. I'm using my manila folder again. On the opposite side that I have my notch, I just drew a quarter inch line all the way across and I'll use that as a guide. So I like to do this because I can just place it onto my fabric, fold over, 
and then I can press right onto the folder. So that makes it a lot easier to get that quarter inch seam. And I'm using this Singer Steamcraft Plus iron and it's got a nice narrow tip for detail work. Once you've gone around the entire napkin, then this is what it looks like. And I'm going to fold in one more time, another quarter inch, and that's going to bring this corner together and miter the corner. So when that comes together, sometimes you have to manipulate that a little bit with your fingers to get that to match up nicely. And then you want to press that. And then I like to use these clips to hold that corner in place and then just continue on folding over another quarter inch and pressing. I don't use the folder for this part because it folds relatively easily where the edge of that fabric is. And that will create your double fold hem. Now we're ready to stitch. So I have this face down on the machine so that I can look at the folded edge of the hem while I'm stitching because we want to get about an eighth of an inch away from the inside fold of this hem. It can be a little tricky depending on needle positions and that's what I love about the Singer Heavy Duty 6800C is that you can get really detailed adjustments on the needle position. So here it is in the left position. There's center, but we need a little bit more. So we need to move it over to the right a little bit more. And I think that looks good. And now I have it set up so that I can run the edge of my napkin along the edge of the presser foot and we should have a nice top stitching seam there. As you come to the corner, you want to try to get your needle to stop in that miter as close to that as possible. Stop with your needle down and then pivot. So here's the completed napkin. So you can see the corner is nicely mitered and I used a pink thread for a little fun contrast. Thanks, Beth. I think napkins just make meals feel so special, uh, especially for holidays or other celebrations. So we're actually hosting a year-long program called Sew Green, which encourages our readers to make their sewing spaces greener, as well as sew some eco-friendly projects. So if you're interested in learning more, check out our website at allpeoplequilt.com slash sewgreen. I'm here with Allison Gam, the designer of Quilts and More magazine for Get Organized, and we wanted to share some ideas for storing handwork supplies. We know this time of year people are traveling more, going to outdoor events, or just want to sit outside to enjoy the nicer weather while sewing, so they need their supplies to be easily transported. Absolutely. So many of these storage items we're going to talk about today are things you may already have around your home. So let's dive into these ideas. Yes. This first one is this great collapsible lunch carrier, which can come in all different shapes and sizes. And what's great about this is it has a lid. So, you know, if you're transporting it, your things aren't gonna fall all over the place. Um, and then, so we have some EPP in here. So we have already basted hexagons. We have some thread, uh, some, uh, needles and then we have other basting some glue and then just some snips mm -hmm. so great everything you need can take it on the go yeah and what I love about this one is 
because it's collapsible, when you're not using it, you can, it squishes, so it's very compact, so you can store it when you're not using it. Right, yeah. Always good when you can <laughs> tuck stuff away when it's not in use. Yes. So another kind of out of the box storage idea is this magnetic tray that's generally used for when you're doing like home repair projects, like you would lay nails or screws mm -hmm. in there to keep them safe. And I personally love doing this when I'm sewing outside because it's magnetic. You can see I have my snips, needles, some pins, some wonder clips, and look at this. It holds everything in place, so if it's windy, if I knock something over, I'm not going to lose any of these small or sharp supplies. Yeah, and from experience, it's easy to lose these things, so it's nice when they can get stuck to something and you don't have to worry about it flying away. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, next we have this little lunch tray. Um, and you know, we, you could get like a lunch tray in any size or like a baking sheet. And um, this is handy because you can lay out all your supplies and easily carry it with you. Um, one thing I love to do is like when I'm not using it, I can tuck it away like in a desk drawer or something, yeah. you know, and um, it's just easy to grab and go. Plus it's cute. Like who knew when I think of lunch trays, I just think of like middle school lunch trays, but this is adorable. Yeah. So a lot of times you can find these like in the kids section or something. So a good size to just carry around with you. Yeah. Okay. Here's another fun idea. So these gum containers, this is a Trident vibe. When they're empty, you can peel the label off and use it to carry handwork supplies. So we have needles, thread, and uh, snips in here. And what I love about this is that the top pops off, so your thread can come out the top. So you're not going to get that tangled or lose it when you're sewing in the car or anything. And you can just close it back up, throw that in your bag or your purse. So, and a great way to reuse something. <laughs> yeah, I love this idea because you can really just fit the essentials in there and yeah, keep it in your car or in your purse and you'll never be without. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have um, <laughs> another kind of container on the go um, that you could take in your car is a mason jar and you could put it in your cup holder or, you know, keep it handy. Um, and so we just have some uh, hand piecing supplies in here. Um, again, kind of the basics, just some needles, thread, binding clips, everything you need. Yeah, I love to bind when I'm traveling in the car. So I love just having a little mason jar that I stick in the uh, cup holder so that I have my binding tools all right next to me. And then when I have those like little threads that you snip off and you're like, I don't know what to do with them in the car, just shove them in the mason jar and I deal with them later. Yeah. Another, I mean, just a really <laughs> great thing so things don't get lost. I like that it has a screw top because you know it's not just going to fall off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And then our last idea is a hard case eyeglass holder. So this is from my glasses I'm wearing now, but if you had an extra one, um, you could use it. So basically inside I have just needles, snips, and then some embroidery floss. Like it's not big, you can't fit tons of things in here, but especially for like embroidery floss that fits perfectly inside. So if you're doing a little stitching, and then I love that it's a hard case. So the scissors aren't gonna come out and poke you if you stick this in your purse. Yeah, I love I love that because it can't get squished. I mean, there are a lot of other containers you could use that have soft sides, but this is nice because, yeah, you're not going to get stabbed by your scissors. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope you enjoy these ideas for transporting and storing handwork, and um, thanks for sharing this with me, Allison. So I'm here with Doris, who is the editor of Quilt Sampler magazine, and we are very excited to show you the quilts from the issue that's coming out later this week on April 29th. So Doris, for those of our viewers who don't know what Quilt Sampler magazine is, why don't you give a little brief description? Sure. Uh, Quilt Sampler comes out twice a year. There's a spring, summer, and a fall, winter issue, and each issue we choose 10 shops across North America to feature as top shops, and they each submit a project to be included in the magazine um, that they sell exclusive kits for. So we're here to show you the spring, summer quilts. Yeah, so let's dive right in, because I know you guys like to see quilts. <laughs> The first quilt is from the shop So Lovely in Irvington, Virginia. It is called Just Beachy, and it was designed by the shop owner, Lee Taylor. Um, it's a 53-inch square quilt uh, made with the Creative Grids Circle Savvy ruler, um, although you can use it, templates. You don't have to have the ruler to make it. And there is one um, paper-piece crab block down at the bottom. Uh, 
that if you're scared off by foundation paper piecing, you could just leave that out and just do the wave part of the quilt. But it's inspired by the um, blue crabs in the area of Virginia that they're in and um, the river waves, the blue crabs live at the bottom of the river. So and I bottom love dwellers. that the quilting mm -hmm. includes crabs on it. It is. It's <laughs> bubbles and, and crabs. And fabric has crabs. And so. some of the fabric is exclusive to their shop. It, and oh. it's a crab design on the fabric as well. How so. fun. Love mm -hmm. it. And the next one is from the shop Mad Bees Quilt and Sew in Mesa, Arizona. The uh, table topper is called Mesa. It is a 16 by 40 inch table topper um, inspired by the Native American symbols and the colors of um, Southwest art in general and, and their environment down there. Yeah, <laughs> and there is applique. I love these colors. They're very striking and just yeah. It's all pieced um, except for the, as she mentioned, the applique on the um, arrowheads, the little black arrowheads. Otherwise, it is a pieced quilt. And yeah, it's, I love the colors of it. I think it's really pretty. Just a quick so and easy project. Yes, for, your table. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and our next one, uh, Rosy Disposition, uh, is from All Stitched Up by Angela in Slidell, Louisiana. And this one is made using um, a Moda fabric line by uh, Corey Yoder. It's called A Beautiful Day and um, it's designed by shop owner Angela Holly and it measures 50 by 63 so nice toddler size quilt or lap quilt throw quilt um, great one to throw over your porch seat and I just love decorate these the house. fabrics <laughs> I just think they're so perfect for spring and summer and yeah. especially this the stripe on it the, the stripe <laughs> makes a great <laughs> yeah, sashing yeah and there's fussy cut roses in the center of each of the fan blocks um, and then there's also a rose pantograph that's quilted on it as well. And I wonder if we can show on the back so you guys yeah. can see. Yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful. pantograph. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. And the next one is from Cary Quilting Company in Cary, North Carolina. This was designed also by the shop owner, uh, Julianne Walther, and it's a 36.5 inch square, <laughs> 36 and a half inch square baby quilt. Um, basically gender neutral. It's designed with kind of farmhouse style piecing on the back to give it the um, look of a wood slat wall and um, machine applique popsicles. And this can be personalized with the baby's name up to nine letters um, just by adding a few more popsicles. So I love that. So you can have it say baby, you can have it say right. a name if they have mm -hmm. a shorter name. Yep. <laughs> um, but just so cute, especially for summer. I can see people using this applique shape for other projects oh my gosh, too. Yeah. Yeah, table runner, placemats, yeah. super cute things you could do with that. Uh, our next quilt is um, a twin size quilt or large throw um, from the Quilting Bee in Spokane, Washington. It is designed by Lori Hine of Cool Water Quilts, and we are calling this quilt Keeping It Cool. It's inspired by um, the wonderful hiking trails and nature areas they have around Spokane. Um, the Black lines are um, representative of the winding trails through the woods and through the mountain areas. And then the colors are um, also inspired by the water and the rocks and the trees in their nature areas and their environment. I think it's really cool. And it's got beautiful custom quilting on it. Yeah, I think those black lines just make these colors pop, especially against that white. So it's a very striking quilt. Yeah, it does. And this quilt is from Buttermilk Basin in Spring Lake Park, Minnesota. The Patriotic Sampler was designed by Stacy West, who's the owner of Buttermilk Basin, and it is a 32 by 40 in 2 inch wall hanging, and it utilizes um, Stacy's own fabrics that uh, from Riley Blake Designs, her Seeds of Glory cotton collection, and then Stacy West's wools, and um, lots of detail in this one, lots of little details in the applique. Um, I think that's going to be a popular one too. Yeah, and this is our <laughs> cover quilt, so um, yeah. I hope to see lots of these out in the world, and um, I think it'll be a popular kit you can buy, and yeah, just so many details, and I think it'd be fun if you don't want to make this exact quilt, you can pick and choose different motifs and make mini quilts, oh, smaller definitely. designs, whatever you yeah, want definitely. to do with it. All right, and the next one is Texas Starlight from Stitch in Heaven in Quitman, Texas. And this one was designed um, by Tiffany Hayes of uh, Needle in a Haystack. And it's using her goddess tool, um, which she also designed. 
And um, again, you don't need the ruler or the tool to make this quilt. You can use templates that we include in the magazine, but it is a 60 by 72 inch throw and it uses um, the Galaxy Ombre line by V & Co for Moda. And um, what's really fun is it looks like there's a lot of fabrics in this quilt, but actually um, there's not as many fabrics as it looks like. It's just the light and the dark are cut from different parts of the ombre fabrics to give you that look. I always think ombres give that extra sparkle to quilts and especially in these they star do. blocks, it looks very sparkly and shimmery. Yeah, and, fun. and this one has a touch of gold metallic in the, oh, fun, in yeah. the fabric too, so. Love it. <laughs> And Cottage Cozy is our next quilt. It is from Old one. City Quilts in Burlington, New Jersey. It is big and it's heavy because it's got minky <laughs> on the back, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it will fit a twin size bed. And um, it's basically designed using um, a focus print, large print focus fabric. And then um, there's two uh, complementary batiks and the rest are all solids. And it's strip pieced, you make it into one, great big square I think it's like a 30 inch square and then cut it apart sort of like a disappearing nine patch um, so it's an easy way to make the sashing and it's designed by the shop owner uh, Judy NG. I just love it. it's such a simple quilt but it looks more complicated because you have that larger floral in yeah. there yeah and all those squares but you know it's strip piece yeah. so we, it's a easy way to put it together and I, I like big prints yeah. and I'm a always attracted to them so I love patterns that show you how to use those because sometimes it's kind of hard to cut into them so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and the next quilt is strained together from home ec workshop in Iowa City Iowa and this one is super fun she was inspired uh, Cody Josephine I should say the uh, owner of the shop is the one that designed this she was inspired by a vintage quilt image that she found on Pinterest um, that had these wonky square blocks uh, but they were lined up so that points to points were lined up and this part was not there so she added the um, horizontal rows uh, to sort of add like more background added sashing pieces essentially between the rows and then they're wonky pieced um, squares and it is all hand quilted she used a big stitch utility quilting on it and there's some ties really? between the yeah the back is beautiful and it's just so soft isn't it it it's is like it's a really soft material yeah, yeah it uses um little ties in between the blocks yeah using a uh, chambray linen for the background and then there's um wovens like yarn dyed wovens that are in the they are they're just super fabric yeah, and it's very super lightweight and soft, soft and, and just something you want to brilliant. cozy up with yeah <laughs> And our next one um, is from Golden Quilt Company in uh, Golden, North, Golden, Colorado, sorry. Uh, this is Flight Time and it was designed by the shop owner, Nancy Swanton. Um, it uses um, primarily K-Facet Collective fabrics. Um, there's all dots in the background, K-Facet dots in the backgrounds of the geese and florals and prints in the geese themselves. And then there's some fun quilting in this one too because she does, can't really see it, but there are, there's detailed feather quilting in all of the flying geese and then this great vine print that goes through um, the sashing and borders. Oh, yeah, and it's a 58 by 67 inch throw. This is just beautiful, it's fun, it's bright, it's playful, I, I love Lots it. Lots of fun quilts for spring and summer if you like to sort of decorate for the season. I think this is a good one too. Yeah, so <laughs> like we said, the new issue of Quilt Sampler Magazine is on sale on April 29th. So we hope you pick up a copy of it so you can read about these amazing ton shops, get a little tour with photos and then make some of their projects. Thanks so much, Doris. You're welcome, thank you. I'm here with Diane Tomlinson from American Patchwork and Quilting for Products We Love. So a few weeks ago, Diane brought a wool project she was working on into the office and I asked her to share some of her favorite tools for working with wool with all of us. So let's, let's talk about this bag situation because I love it. This is a Yazi bag and during COVID I kind of got hooked on Sue Spargo embroidery. So I collected a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and had a pile basically in a container so I wanted a way to organize it so this is a good little organizer and I can take it to the car I can take it on vacation whatever I want so it opens 
I can get a book in there. I can get, uh, I started a block of the month. So I can get those in there. Pretty. And then all of my threads. It has pouches for thread to organize those. And I love that they're clear so you can see. Yes, the colors. I can get my hands on them mm -hmm. quick. Um, like my variegated or my uh, metallics, my shiny. And then I have a pouch here for scraps. Uh -huh. Then I have um, my basic threads and my tools and notions. Um, a few things I'll show here. Yeah. Um, I have a fabric glue uh -huh. I like to use. Jalili. Oh, yeah. Um, I keep my scissors in this handy little pouch. And this pattern is from yes. our December issue of American Patchwork and Quilting, so yeah. fun to see that show up. <laughs> keeps, it keeps the scissors from poking through the side. Yeah, so, yep, yeah, good idea. Yeah. Um, I have some thread magic you can run your thread through um, to make it go through faster. Um, it's like a conditioner to like stiffen it or to smooth it out. Make your thread, the thread slide through easier and not fray as much. Great. And my sharpener <laughs> and marking pencils and a little um, thimbles. I've, I've tried these handy little. How do you um, like these it. compared to a normal thimble? I gotta get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Because these are just like a little a little dot. Like a little sticky dot you would just yeah. stick on your finger instead of a thimble that would fit over your finger. Right. I have a place I usually get a hole in my finger. Oh. <laughs> so. As um, I feel like a lot of quilters can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. And I have a couple other thimbles I like. I really love these little leather thimbles. They have a metal piece in them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll switch off and use this one. You have options. Yes. <laughs> And then I keep some of my Sue Spargo circles huh? over in this pouch. And what do you use the circles for? Um, uh, for instance, making circles for these. Um, I can okay. trace them nice and easy. Mm -hmm. And they come in um, from sizes one to three inches. <laughs> oh, and I have my needle holder. Yes. And I have those labeled. Did you make this? Yes. Oh, it's beautiful. Thanks. So, so. just on the inside, just... Yeah, There's and then I have a wool. tag on what kind oh, of, that's of handy. needles. Oh, so you can keep everything organized. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah, Sue, Sue tells you what kind of thread to use with what kind of needle. Mm -hmm. So I try to keep those organized so I can keep track of them. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing all of your favorite wool products with us. I just love seeing what people use, especially you know, as someone who doesn't work with a lot of wool, I am always looking for suggestions on what <laughs> works best for others. So thanks for sharing with us, Diane. You're and that's it for today's show. Thank you everyone who watched. We really hope you enjoyed it. And we know we talked through a lot of things today. So in the video description, you can find a link where we'll list all of the products, the resources, um, the patterns, everything we mentioned today will be in there so that you can browse through, click on things you are interested in, and learn more. We'll see you next month.